What's up, everybody? Today is episode number two of the Nine Finger Kitchen, and today we're making walleye fish tacos. If you're back watching this episode, it must be that I didn't suck too much on the meatloaf episode. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that meatloaf recipe. I know that uh, um, it's a hit in our house, but today we're gonna be making something that is a hit for me. Uh, I know my wife likes uh, fish tacos. My kids, eh, I don't know if they're quite there yet as far as the way that I make them, but uh, one of my favorite foods, period, hands down, are different varieties of street tacos. And I am a street taco nut, I'm a food cart nut, and um, today we're gonna be making fish tacos with walleye that my father-in-law and my daughter actually caught out of the Mississippi River. And um, if you've never had walleye before, uh, it's, it's gonna blow your mind, man. I, I love fresh walleye uh, right out of the river. These have been frozen for a couple months uh, and um, we're gonna cook them up today and make some, some really good fish tacos. So the first thing, that I wanna kinda of remind everybody is hit that subscribe button down below so that when I uh, launch all these videos, they're gonna come direct to you. Make sure you guys are following along on the Nine Finger Chronicles Instagram page. Make sure you're following on the uh, Sportsman's Nation Instagram page because that's where you're gonna get notifications of when a new video uh, is coming out. So, the first thing that we're gonna do with these fish tacos is we're gonna make the, the, the slaw that goes over top of it. And this is gonna be a cilantro lime, uh, kind of a Mexican slaw that goes in the tortilla shell with the fish and uh, it's really good, right? So we have a jalapeno here, we have three white onions, we have uh, uh, cilantro and I don't know about you guys, but man, like the smell of fresh cilantro is just money, I love it. Uh, you're gonna need about a half cup of uh, fresh cilantro. And then we have some, uh, some dry ingredients that are gonna go into it as well. We have, and I'm looking at my notes here, we have one half teaspoon of ground cumin, a half teaspoon of sea salt, one fourth teaspoon of uh, black pepper, and one half teaspoon of garlic powder. And uh, these, these are the dry, dry ingredients that, are gonna, that I put in first, right? And then we have roughly one fourth of a cup of lime juice that's gonna go in here. And I'll be mixing some of this stuff up peri periodically before I put it in with the slaw that, uh, that we make. And then uh, what's the other ingredient here? We have one jalapeno and I'm just gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna use the whole jalapeno and I'll be completely honest with you. And I know you guys will probably make fun of me for this, but I'm kind of a sissy when it comes to spices. I am not, I like a little kick to my meals, but I don't, I'm not the kind of guy who likes to get his mouth blown out by, uh, by spice. So uh, I'm gonna put just a little bit of hell, I'm gonna prove my manhood today and I'm gonna put the whole jalapeno in there. And uh, I'm gonna chop them up fairly small in fairly small pieces. I don't uh, want to have a big chunk, but I want that flavor to be there. And although I, I'm not a spice, like a spicy kind of guy, I do like having the, uh, the smell of the jalapenos as well. I'm a fan of that. So the next thing that I'm gonna be doing is the uh, three green onions. So, and these are gonna add just a little bit of crunch in with that slaw, that a little bit of that onion flavor. Really like that. And these are gonna be I don't know if you can get tight in here on this to show the kind of size that I, I like here, but uh, there's that. That's going in the mix, okay? And then obviously the cilantro. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of the, of the cilantro. 
and you're going to need a half a cup of this. And again, like I mentioned in the first video, I typically don't measure everything that I put into my ingredients. I'm only saying it to you guys so that uh, you have a reference point of where, you know, what we're talking about and how much to use. Now, I kind of get this tight. And this, again, I love cilantro. And I will be adding a little bit more fresh cilantro to the finished product when it's done so I'm not gonna be using all of it. And this is a little bit more than a half a cup. But like I said, I'll be using it later. So here's a half a cup as far as the, the, uh, the, the slaw is concerned. That's what we're dealing with. That's how much. Now I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to put this in here. And I'm just going to set it aside for the finished product. Now, the next thing that uh, we're going to be adding in this is one cup of mayonnaise. And I should have done this before I started recording. But there's that. So we're going to need one cup of mayo. about like that and that's going to make this real creamy okay let's see here uh cilantro we've added lime juice mayo ground cumin sea salt pepper green onions garlic powder jalapenos and then something to make it a little sweeter um, and a little bit more creamier we are adding one tablespoon of honey uh, to the mix. So uh, this is gonna be, this is gonna make it real good. So I don't know if I would overdo it on the honey just because I don't want this to necessarily be uh, sugary sweet. Uh, I like the freshness of the lime and the cilantro and I think that's really what is gonna make this, uh, this coleslaw or this uh, taco slaw pop. Now, again, you want to be able to taste the freshness of the fish. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where you want to make sure you're, you're, you're mixing the ingredients the right way and you're not overdoing one ingredient or the other because you don't want it to be one thing to be overpowering. Uh, at least that's, that's the way I look at it. Um, so I want, I want to taste the fresh fish. I want to taste the, the fresh ingredients here. And uh, so what we're doing is we're going to mix this up first and then I'm going to get the actual slaw out of the uh, out of the fridge and then I'm going to fold that in yeah like I said uh, earlier this this fish was uh, caught out of the Mississippi River and my uh, father-in-law he's probably a bigger fisherman nut than I am a whitetail guy. So uh, he's been fishing certain parts of the Mississippi River for like 45 years now. So whenever we go up there, it's awesome to fish with him because it's like a personal guide. We, he, you know, he knows all the spots. He's like, what do you want to catch today? I'm a huge fan of smallmouth, uh, fishing for smallmouth. So he knows all the smallmouth places or the uh, largemouth uh, places or the walleye, or if you want to catch a northern here, throw it in the weeds. And so it's awesome. He has a, he's a personal guide at, at that point. So, and my daughter, uh, she's a nut. She loves to fish. That's the question. I'm, I'm trying to talk her into going uh, turkey hunting with me this year. And she's all about, hey, when can I go fishing? When can I get on grandpa's boat? So now we have, this is pretty simple. Classic coleslaw from Dole. I didn't make this at all. This is just going right in the mix here. And then, like I said, we're going to set this into the, uh, we're going to mix it up and then we're going to set it in the fridge. Mix this up. And this is going in the fridge to stay cold. while we cook the fish.
there you go. And this is one of those meals that's really light. The meatloaf recipe that we put out last week or the last time was, it's a hearty meal, right? It's one of those cold days, uh, especially the, the booze that we paired with it, right? It was one of those uh, meals that it's hearty. It's going to fill your gut. You're going to want to fall asleep too. This is more of a light type of uh, meal where I could probably crush 30 of these uh, uh, of these fish tacos with a, a good light beer. And uh, I'll get into that here in a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna taste this here real quick. Mm. That's crazy. All right, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put this in the fridge and then I'm gonna organize and we're gonna start making the fish. All right, so if you're from the Midwest, you should probably know about shore lunch. I don't know how many meals I've had throughout the years, especially during fish fries, have been breaded by shore lunch, man. It's almost like a staple in my family. It's, it, it's always been in the cabinets, it's always been in the cupboards, and uh, that's what we're gonna be doing um, with the tacos today. So we have the batter here, and uh, the batter is going in this big old bowl here. And it's gonna be beer batter, so that's why I have uh, another beer out here. So today's beer of choice is Goose Island 312. Um, I love this beer, right? I am, uh, I'm not a heavy, like I'm not the kind of guy who likes a big, heavy, dark, brown beer. I like wheats, I like these, uh, these ales, these uh, light ales. And uh, that's what we're, we're drinking today. And it actually pairs really well with the fish tacos that we're gonna be, um, that we're gonna be doing later. So we're just gonna mix in a little bit of this beer and then we'll drink the rest. But simple batter, man. You, can't, uh, you really can't mess it up. Put a little bit more in here. Man, I'm gonna use a whole bottle on this. Getting messy now. And then what I like to do is once the, the batter is made, I actually like to take a half a lime and squeeze a half a lime uh, worth of juice in there and uh, maybe even a little bit of lemon pepper sauce in with it just to add a, a, some some new flavors into the fish so i probably didn't need to make all this batter but i'm feeding uh, myself the camera guy my wife uh, when she gets back and potentially my son so uh, i know he's a huge fan of uh, fish too so he may not eat the taco but he'll get uh Oh, I love this stuff. And there you go. And now, so I'll tell you this. I, I don't know why this just popped into my head, but it's the very first fish that I ever caught. Uh, my dad was in, uh, my dad was with me and I had a Kermit the Frog uh, pole from Walmart or wherever, excuse me. And, uh, uh, from Walmart and we were fishing for carp in a stream that kind of went through uh, went through an old cattle pasture and uh, so you know we're basically just throwing the the bobber and the corn upstream and watching it float down and, and potentially we'd be uh, potentially we would be catching some carp or maybe some bullheads they'd, they'd bite on on the corn and so then uh, my bobber went under and I'll bet you at this time I was probably, mm, I was probably like five years old at the time. And a gigantic carp took my bobber under. And uh, now this is that half a lime I was talking about, squeezing the juice in there. And uh, the, so the bobber goes under and I, it took everything basically for me to hold that fishing pole in. And the carp was swimming away 
and it was pulling me into the creek. And my dad was off watching my brother and my mom or doing something at, at, uh, on the other side of the bank or on the, down, the, down the sandbar. <laughs> and so now I'm knee deep. Now I'm waist deep. And I can remember my dad having to grab me and grab the pole and basically walk backwards until the fish was on the bank because you know I, I don't know why we couldn't reel it in but that's like one of my very first fishing um experiences and, and uh, a reason why fishing is a, just an awesome uh, outdoor activity to get kids involved so uh i'm a huge fan of fishing especially with kids because you don't have to take it too serious right i take my whitetail stuff really serious probably almost too serious at times and uh and with the uh, uh with fishing it's much more relaxed if you catch a fish it's good but then if you don't catch a fish you can educate the kids on um you know you can educate the kids on you know you don't always catch fish right just like you don't always uh shoot a deer but in the deer woods you got to be really quiet all right so i sprinkled just a little bit of lemon pepper on the top and that's getting mixed in there again so now we have this batter it's going to taste a little bit like lime it's going to have a little bit of lemon pepper in it but it's just a uh, a couple more layers of flavor that are going to uh, make this fish taste really good all right so we have the batter and get some of this stuff out of the way and what i want to do here is i'm going to pull out one of these street taco tortillas so we don't want it too big where it's laying all the way out both sides. And we don't want it too small where you got like, this, I'm talking about the size of the, the fish that we're gonna be cutting here. Uh, you want it to just fit right in the middle so that every bite of one of these things, you're gonna be getting a bite of fish a bite of, and a bite of slaw. So some beautiful walleye right here, okay? And what we're gonna do cut it so now you have these these kind of strips this is one side of a walleye right here okay and again just like that so now you have these pieces i'm going to say three inches long right and for time purposes i'm not going to cut all these up and make all these right now i'll tell you what i'm going to make one more right here right basically i'm cutting it in half all right so we're getting pieces about this big and if you hold it up next to the the taco shell or the tortilla you can see the size and that's going to make a really good uh really good piece here so let's put the fish over to the side get the batter i'm going to put this right in front of me and then i'm going to slide the oil now the oil right now is at 300 degrees um, it's been on for a little while so the oil is nice and hot actually i'm gonna so i'm gonna take this this fish get this out of here coat it now i'm i'm not heavy on the batter this is a thick batter but uh i'm gonna get a little bit of it off here. I don't want it basically like a pancake on it. I want a, I want a thin, crispy piece of fish, all right? So I'm just gonna lay it right down in there. And that's a beautiful sound right there. Now, some of these pieces are thinner, so they're gonna have to be, uh, they're, gonna have, they're not gonna need to be in there as long. So just watch it, right? Um, there's that. And I'll put the smaller ones over on the other side. I have to tell a drunk story. I, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a story like a nine finger kitchen if I didn't tell a story about um, some kids doing some dumb drunk stuff. So I can remember one time we were in college and uh, we were, we were fishing 
uh, out at one of my buddy's uh, ponds. And, he, and my one buddy catches a, a bullhead. And we all know catfish and bullheads have those, those spikes that stick out of their fins sometimes if they're, um, and they can poke you. Well, my buddy, he's had a couple bush lights and uh, he can't get the hook off of this bullhead. I think we were fishing for bluegill or, or crappie or something. And uh, so he can't, get the, he can't get the hook out of this, this bullhead. And it took some time and he finally gets the hook out of this bullhead and the bullhead drops down onto the, uh, uh, down onto the ground. And he's, you know, had a couple. So he, he winds up for a kick and he goes to kick this this bullhead back into the water and its fin went through his shoe into his big toe like this deep and he bled for days <laughs> he bled for days and we all got a good uh, laugh at that and uh, basically made fun of him to this day i think we call him a bullhead foot or something like that i can't remember but it was one of the funniest things i think i've ever seen while fishing and drinking at the same time so just, uh, I guess, don't drink and fish, or if there's a, if you can even do that. I don't, I'm not sure really what the, what the motto of that story is, but there's the, <laughs> there's the story. All right, so we are taking them out here. They are done. There's no better smell. I wish you guys could smell this. Um, and for, you know, if, obviously if you're a Midwest person or any human being who uh, likes fish, you know, fried fish in a skillet is a very good smell. So I'm gonna slide this out of the way here. I'm gonna slide this off to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is I have a little pan over here that is, these are just room temperature, right? But I'm going to uh, take two of these and I'm going to throw them in this pan basically to just get them warm, maybe toast them up just a little bit. So, and then I'll flip them here in a second. Meanwhile, I'm going to plate some other things here. This is a plate. Well, you know that. This is, <laughs> this is a plate. This is a plate. Um, Chips and salsa, dude. I think that's how I got through college. Chips and salsa and Chinese food. So I'm going to get some chips on this plate. Hy-Vee brand tortilla chips. If you're not familiar with Hy-Vee, it's a grocery store in the Midwest. They're money. Um, and then the other thing that uh, I love is this stuff called Texas style two corn salsa. I'll, I will go through a jar of this in 10 minutes. It's, uh, it's the bomb diggity. So I'm going to take a couple scoops of this. Put that right there on the plate. I'm making a mess, but who cares? All right, so that's off to the side. Now we have everybody's favorite, an avocado. And I heard, I heard this on the news that... I think one of the, the leading injuries, this is probably a, a, a fake fact, but people who are under 30 are more apt to get hurt when opening up an avocado than people over 30. So I'm 40, so the likelihood of me getting hurt while opening this avocado goes down, yet my camera guy over here, there's a good chance he hurts, he hurts himself because of... Uh, of that and I just screwed that up anyway there's that where'd that spoon go dig this out and this is going on our this is going to go on our, our fish taco too so we're going to slice this up I'm going to come over here Flip these one time, and uh, now I'm going to pull the slaw out of the fridge and uh, make a couple of these tacos. All 
All right, here's the slaw. Uh, I need a fork. All right, so we got two tacos here. We have, uh, let's put a piece of fish on them first. All right, ooh, it's kind of hot. Fold it up, put on some of the slaw. See, I'm telling you, these are gonna be money. Now the star of the show here is not the slaw, it's the fish. So I, I look at it like the slaw is just a sidekick, right? You wanna taste it, but the big flavor here is the walleye, all right? And then, so what we have here is we got the fish, we got the uh, chips and salsa. We're gonna add a little bit of avocado into the mix here. Right, and then we serve that. With a lime wedge and that can go over top of the uh, over top of everything. And then some people like some hot sauce. Here's a couple hot sauces that we keep. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Here's some Tabasco sauce, but here's some hot sauce that my wife really likes. And ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you walleye fish tacos, chips and salsa, and I don't even know, this took less than 30 minutes, right around that 30 minute mark uh, to, from setup to complete. So this is definitely a meal that anybody can cook with kids, with a busy schedule, with uh, you know, a crazy life whatever this is uh quick it's easy it's delicious and it's just another way to use your uh wild game and fish man so uh what i really would love for you guys to do is comment below or send me a dm uh, through instagram or facebook letting me know if you've tried this recipe if you tried the meatloaf recipe or any of the other recipes uh, that i'm going to be putting out and uh, let me know what you think uh, i also uh, love to hear twists and turns when it comes to uh, how maybe you would make the recipe different. So uh, I think what we need to do now is uh, take a bite here. I made one for me and one for my camera guy. And let's just see how this uh, turned out. I'm gonna put a little bit of lime over top of that. Yeah, I'll eat 30 of these. <laughs> They're really good. Um, really good. And uh, so I don't really even want to talk anymore. I kind of just want to end the show here so I can uh, keep cooking and eating these things. Oh, shit, I forgot. Uh, we do have to talk about the pairings, right? So with a light meal like this, I'm a huge fan of light beers. Um, like I said, wheats. I'm not... I'm not a man. I don't drink IPAs, bro. But um, this is a really good beer, Goose Island 312. If you're going to drink wine, we have, uh, I'm going to do this one first. I pretty much just talked to someone who I, I said, hey, what goes good with fish tacos? And they say this Vino Verde, right? Um, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever had it. But one of my favorite wines probably I'm going to put I'm going to say favorite with an asterisk around it is Sauvignon Blanc uh, I love this kind of wine especially with this kind of meal so uh, a really good Sauvignon Blanc this one is from New Zealand uh, they taste a little bit different than other Sauvignon Blancs but uh, I'm a huge fan of Sauvignon Blancs um, from New Zealand now I've covered that I've covered this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this episode. Hopefully I got better. And uh, now I'm going to crush the rest of this. And we'll talk to you guys next time.